in here and get it. Now, of course, they got to be very cognizant of where the pace car is with the field here. They didn't need to put any gas in. They've got it loaded, packed all the way full, looking on the inside there to see if there's any tow out on this truck. That's one of the things the drivers check, and they'll be able to tell. They may have to bring a string out and put on that to see. Bliss is turning it right to left to see. So far, he says the wheel feels pretty good. Now, they got to keep their eye on the pace truck here, and Bliss will go back to the racetrack. The, the, the 60 truck was also on pit road. Do you see the sticker tire? He put new tires on that. They may have to come back in to do some repair work to all the sheet metal damage he got from that tire blowing out. Again, not much damage from the actual spin, but when the tire blew, a lot of damage to that number 60 truck. We'll settle this all when we come back. Start your engines. It's adrenaline and expert analysis with this ultimate free race show. NASCAR Race Day, built by the Home Depot, live from Charlotte tomorrow, 5.30 p.m. Eastern, only on speed. We had some trucks come on, on pit road during this caution flag. Really some trucks that I wouldn't have thought would have pitted, but you know, we had the, uh, we had the 99 of Eric Darnell. He came down pit road, as you see right there. He's like, they're gonna put tires on that truck already. And he'd been into the fence a little bit, Phil, with that, with that truck. Bodine pitted. Uh, this could be a strategy to try to make sure they have enough gas to get past halfway, Rick. And, and if they are able to do that here, look, they're under the hood of Todd's truck. This is 04 right there. That's Scott Legacy Jr. So you saw Todd Bodine's crew go under the hood. I'm not sure what kind of adjustments they've been making. There's David Starr, the 11. Remember, he told us during qualifying he got so little practice that he probably needed to make an adjustment on his truck. David Starr actually has changed two engines already today from the start of practice this morning. So they these really these strong. guys, if these guys get enough caution flags here, they might stretch this thing into a one-stop deal uh, now that they've topped their tanks off. Mike Hillman told me that he thought they, they, he knew they could run 60 laps. And he said, if we get enough caution laps, we may be able to do it on one pit stop. And this, this running five or six laps might get them in that window and give them a little cushion. Krista, is that true? Yeah, they're also really loose, Phil. In fact, so loose that they needed to go under the hood to check things out. They had to close off the shock and go way down on the track bar. They just had a meeting back here behind their pit box trying to figure out what adjustments they would need to make on the next stop. They've got flashlights up on the wall ready to go if they have to go under the hood again. Ray. Well, Krista, the 60 Jack Sprague's uh, truck is here, and what they're trying to do is not just rely on the bear bond, which is these big strips of tape they're putting on there. They want to put a little sheet of metal on there or at least get this... Uh, rear deck of the truck riveted back down. They're afraid it's going to blow back off. Now the problem is when they come in, they catch up to the back of the field. They only have about 10 or 11 seconds here before they got to go back. You see they're running some rivets in there. John Armstrong's taking care of that. They've got, got lots of tape on the side of this Conway Toyota and they're trying to make sure. Now here comes the pace truck. He's going to have to leave and Sprague will get out ahead of him. Yeah, he won't be able to come back in, Phil. There's one to go. So uh, they needed to finish that work up, get him on the racetrack, and uh, so that he's able to restart at the tail of the field. Isn't it interesting? Todd Bodine, uh, the season he's having, he only ran three or four laps. He called his crew and said, this thing's so loose, I can't drive it. We got to work on it. They went under the hood on that thing. You know, it also reinforces the fact that most people used to think if it got dark, the track got tighter. Obviously, Todd Bodine felt like they had their truck handling like they wanted it to start this race. He was too loose. He already made, a, made an adjustment three, four laps of green flag racing into the race. Riding along with Todd Bodine and that Lumber Liquidators. Number 30, you can take a look at Lumber Liquidators on there on the front. They've got a special promotion going on this weekend. That's through May 21st. You can go to the website, lumberliquidators.com or call 1-800-FLOORING, a special Discount for NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series fans that are watching here on Speed. 5% discount through Sunday, May 21st. Bliss off the track, guys. Yeah, and, Todd, and excuse me, Jack Sprague's back in the pits, Rick, and then the, and the leaders are coming to get the green. Uh, he, 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 Ray, this, this has got to be a, this can't be what they had on mind. No, absolutely not, Michael. Bliss just came on the radio and said something very bad wrong. The truck has no grip in the front after this accident. It feels like we may have broken a tie rod. As I said, when he came in the last time, he was checking the steering there, but he said something very serious is wrong with his IWX Chevy. Green flag fly Skinner still holding on to the top spot. He's the only one who's led laps here so far as we have just completed our 10th lap. There's Ron Hornaday. Ooh, tr oh, side-by-side -side action with Aaron Crocker. He is the king of the restarts. You have to be ready when Ron Hornaday is behind you. Yeah, that restart he got on her and put her up top. Now look at all the trucks coming by, Aaron. 
This is just all a part of getting in there with the guys and mixing it up. She's got a great truck. Ron got a, got a jump on her. Now she's got to make sure she tries to claw her way back into line so she can start picking these guys back off. Look at this wad of oh. right here. Mark Martin right in the middle of that mess, too. Wow. There's Ted Musgrave, the nine truck right there. There's a 77 of Brendan Gaughan, the 75 of Eric Almarola, Dennis Setzer, the 85, and Mac Crafton in the 88. How refreshing is it to see these guys on this brand new pavement and they're racing side by side 10 laps into the event. That's great. That tells you how good of a job Goodyear Whoa. did with the tire they brought here. That was close. Back in the field there, we saw a little contact. There's the 18 truck of Bobby Hamilton Jr. on pit road. You see him put tires. He must have felt like he had a flat tire. They're gonna, right, they're gonna right side Ray, what's going on with Bobby Hamilton? Yeah, guys, it was a flat right front. At least that's what Bobby said. Bad vibration coming off four. He got it lucky just in time, made it to pit road. Looks like he won't lose a lap. Big lead for Mike Skinner. You see him, he's got about a, almost a second lead right now on Ron Horner Day. A little bit over a second, actually. Skinner's been very strong on mile and a half tracks. Just really hasn't been able to close the deal. He was so good as we heard first to tell us before the before the race how good he was here last year led a bunch of the race and he got involved in an accident there's the 51 of that is that Kyle Bush or Rowdy Bush or, or who is that in that 51 truck Kyle Burns I don't know but whoever's in it's come from 20th and that seventh position he's taken on the inside there that truck was way way loose in, pra in qualifying excuse me Phil looks like they got her tuned up for the race here comes Mark Martin up on route of it now Richie Waters was really confident going into this race. They really felt like they had a good race truck. Even though this wasn't their primary truck, he felt like they had a truck that could win this race, and it sure looks like it. Don't count out the driver we're riding along with, Mark Martin. Again, four races that he started this season. He's sitting fourth in the points, and he's won two of those races. We heard Mark Martin jump out of the throttle there as he entered the corner. There's the 30 of Tabo Don trying to make up some ground. Kyle Chrysalop just in front of him. That's a battle for the 20th spot right there. We saw a lot of yellow stripes there in front of Todd Bodine, too. And right here, a battle for eighth. Martin taking it away from David Rudiman. Yeah, and there's about four other trucks right behind these two. So Rudiman, ooh, that's it's hard to hang on to your truck there. Look at that. They're, are they going to go three wide as, as Mark? Wow. How about David Rudiman charging on the outside, holding his position? Yeah, that'll make Mark hot. Yeah, I think like Mark got loose on the bottom right there. He didn't want to take a chance. Now he's going to let David get in the corner. Then he's going to try to beat him center. That Mark. right there's a great sight, though. Rudiman ran real strong up high already in this race. I, I love it. I love what I'm seeing so far. And I think I think you got to just tip your hat to Goodyear. They're the reason why this is happening. Rudiman looked up. He drove in the corner a little bit too hard. Lost the front end. That allowed Mark to drive right up beside him. Let's we'll see what Mark can do as they get down toward turn number one. Four turns number one. I bet you every vein in his head's popping out because he's been getting really <laughs> mad at people this year for racing him unnecessarily. He's deeming this unnecessarily. He caught David. He drove up beside him. Now David's got him pinched down to the bottom, and uh, I bet you that Mark's none too happy about it. And Mark is one of the first drivers in the Cup Series back several years ago that if you were faster than him and you caught him, he would pull over and let you go. He's going to make it by David Rudum this time. Look at him shaking that fist. Good job, good job. Just hit your bars there. Whoops. Stop. That was Mike, Mike Bean, Bean talking to driver Mark Martin there, telling him good job. That's Dennis Setzer right there, the Shell Rotella T Chevrolet. He's on the inside. He's fighting the exact same battle that Mark did just now. A little bit hesitant to drive down on the inside of another truck. Let's see what he does. See him back off a little bit early. Now he wants to try to get the throttle through the center of the corner and beat him off the corner. And, and, and then Mark's taking Mark's side of this deal, they lost a half a straightaway to the car, to the trucks ahead of them while they were battling side by side. So Mark's goal is to be the leader. He doesn't want to be messing around for, with somebody for seventh or eighth. He thinks that if Rudman would have just let off and they, they could have both been closer to the leader right now. And he's right. He's exactly right. <laughs> That's hard to tell a driver, though, to let off and let somebody buy you, though, isn't it? Bill? Well, I mean, a lot, as you saw, for those of you that watched the next up Cup race from Darlington last week, Everybody that got past pulled over and let the other guy go because that's such a tough racetrack to run side-by-side -side on. More side-by-side -side racing. 
The Conway Freight Toyota on the outside of Craig Kinzer. That's the 46 and the 60 side by side. We ride along with the Lumber Liquidators number 30 Toyota. Oh, Whoa, look at a lot of sparks there. He just looked like he got down on the apron and that that front balance just rubbed on the apron the whole time. Rubbed the left front corner of that front balance. It's Kyle Crystal off the 15 truck on the outside. Tabo Dan tiptoeing up top to go around Kinzer. Todd Bodine has a formidable challenge in front of him. Since Kansas City of last year, he's never finished out of the top two on a mile and a half track. That is an unbelievable record if he can continue that tonight. Battle for third. Here comes Rowdy Bush, Kurt Kyle Bush, <laughs> whatever you want to yeah. call it. It's Kyle Bush making his way yeah. up into third. That's, he gets by Johnny Benson's Toyota. That's Johnny right there. He's running in the fourth position. There's Rick Crawford to circle bar forward and fifth. I think Kyle Busch may have an identity problem. I asked him about that down there. He was actually putting decals on that yeah. on that truck to make it look more like that car from Days of Thunder. The, what, the red stripe, Kyle was putting those on himself, and he just said, hey, I love that movie. I've watched it probably 300 times, and uh, when they said the truck was going to be number 51, I said, why not? Looks just like it. It really does. Kyle Busch making his way up toward the front. Remember, he won this race a year ago. But this is the guy he's chasing, the number five of Mike Skinner out in front. Skinner, Hornaday, Bush, Crawford, and Cook. They are your top five as we've completed 23 races.